Welcome back, viewers. The Department of Labor says moves are underway to review the Labor Code established in 1999. The review of the Labor Code is one of several activities being undertaken to observe Labor Month. It is scheduled for September 25th. Labor Commissioner Cyrus Griffith says they are partnering with the Canadian High Commission for the review. We expect a consultant to be here during the middle of this month, and the consultant will have preliminary meetings with the various stakeholders regarding the code itself, and she would get from them areas where they want to suggest amendments to be made. So, as I said, we are in partnership with the Canadian High Commission, and they have agreed to, to fund that aspect of the code. So, as we are, we are going to accept it, obviously, if we get a party to, to, to help in that regard, then obviously we, we would accept it. So, hence the reason why it is put for September. And when the consultant comes, then we will sit and discuss after she meets with individuals from the Employers Federation, Trade Union Council, etc. Griffith says there have been concerted calls from the public for a review of the Labor Code. The law is dynamic, right? And there always been there's, there's always room for improving on laws and reviewing of laws and reviewing of legislation. So as I said, the code that was passed in 1999. And over the years, down the years, there have been certain serious complaints from employers, trade unions, etc., and government regarding various aspects of the code. We have in the ministry areas where the employers, the trade unions have some concern regarding various sections of the code. But they, we have partnership with the Canadian High Commission, and they are prepared to send a consultant to us, and the consultant will meet with the various stakeholders. For whatever reason, they can come up with the same recommendation that the employers receive. You want A, B, C, or these sections be reviewed. And similarly, the, the Trade Union Council, they can come up with the same sections that they want re reviewed. That is what we have in the ministry at this time. But if they are prepared to partnership and fund it, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't accept it. The Labor Commissioner says Section 661 is one of those being challenged. There is Section 661. The unions have been complaining about Section 661. Since that strike in the breeze, that has been burning a burning issue for some time. And it's yet to be amended, so I guess the union still have it outstanding as an as a area that they want amended. So that obviously that will come up. The employers, are, they, they would want that to remain in the act as it is. So as I say, there will be discussions to deal with all the issues. And then hopefully at the end of the day, we didn't have a, we'd have a document that the parties would, would agree to. And then we go to cabinet and then on to, to legal affairs and, and to parliament to get enacted with the amendments have agreed by the parties, among the parties. Meanwhile, as part of activities for the month, Labour officials spent time giving back to the elderly during a visit to a home in St. Andrew on Wednesday. The gesture that was welcomed by staff and residents of the St. Martin's Deporis Home for the Aged, located in Crochu, St. Andrew. The ministry delivered a food hamper, sang songs, and were also entertained by the residents. Details from Karen Maureen Alexander. On receiving the package, overseer of the home, Mrs. Lorraine Moraine, says the items are much needed and will go a long way. On behalf of the management and staff residents of the St. Martin Home, I want to thank you all in a special way for your donation, for your token of appreciation. We know that it will go a long way and we always appreciate when people do this good gesture towards the home. As you know, it's a non-profitable organization and we always try to do our best with the little that we receive. So we, I assure you that everything will be used and that it would help us in a very special way because there, we need, there are much needed things and we know that this basket is filled with that. So thank you once again on behalf of the management staff and the residents of the home. Senior Labour Officer Mrs. Elizabeth Cyrus says the staff of the ministry had a good time interacting with the residents at the home and is hoping to make another visit in the future. She says it's always good to give back. These people have given to us over the years and sometimes these people are left there and sometimes they don't have family to visit. We're not sure, but we feel as come in and give them something we're giving back 
to them for what they have done for us over the years because they are great grandparents, they are grandparents, and we just wanted to give back to them. The Ministry of Labor staff also visited the St. David's Catholic Secondary School where they presented information on preparation for the world of work and on the history of the Ministry of Labor and how it has evolved over the years. A Form 3 student, Joey Burgess, says the presentation was interesting and it's information that will come in handy in preparation for the future. He basically talked about preparation for work life, for the world of work. So he talked about the, the way your attitude, the way you behave, like then he go on to talk about your what you do on work, about tattoos and stuff to present yourself so people will actually want you to work for them. Then he then went on to talk to to talk about your education, how you should take it serious because it will come in handy. From St. Davis Catholic Secondary School, I am Karin Marine Alexander reporting for the GIS News. Thank you, Karin. You're watching the GIS News Sports is up next. Grenada in action today in the qualifying round of the Caribbean football tournament in Puerto Rico. Young sprinter Milani Rodney being challenged to keep Grenada's 400 meter legacy alive and kicking. Sports Minister Emily Pierre happy with the partnership being developed between uh, the government and sport associations to enhance sports. This is another GI Sports. Hello, I'm Trevor Thwaites. Starting with football, Grenada is expected to make a positive start in their quest to win the group in the qualifying tournament for the finals of the Caribbean football tournament. Coach Anthony Modest says that they are hoping to get off to a good start with a victory over French Guiana in their opening game later on this evening in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Last time the teams met almost two years ago in St. George's, French Guiana won 2-1 at the National Stadium. However, Coach Modest says that Grenada is looking to turn around the result with a superlative performance that will result in a victory. He says that the Spice Boys are looking to win the group that's made up of Grenada, host Puerto Rico, and French Guiana, also Curacao. Grenada's second game is on Friday, September the 5th, against Curacao, and the third and final on Sunday the 7th, and they're against um, the host Puerto Rico. Grenada, of course, hoping to qualify for the next round of the competition, Shalou for Trinidad and Tobago in October, and of course, the grand final in Jamaica in December. We wish them the very best. The Grenada Football Association, GFA, has hailed its inaugural Grand Neck Youth Football Festival, held last week Saturday at the National Stadium as a big success. It's said that over 200 children from all the parishes including Karakou, participated in the one-day festival, which saw competition in the under-10 and under-13 categories. Teams were placed in two groups, with uh, them qualifying to play against each other. The winners advanced to the final, with St. George and St. John, advancing to the under-10 and under... the under-10 final, and St. George and St. Andrew, the under-13 playoff. St. George beat St. John three goals to one to win the under-10 tournament, while St. Andrew beat St. Mark's four goals to one and penalty kicks to take the under-13 division. Anthony Alexander of St. George and Kevin Maitland of St. Andrew were the most valuable players in the under-10 and under-13 categories, respectively. Attractive trophies were presented to the champions, while second-place team received medals. All of the 200 participants received a notebook from the sponsors, Grenlec. Well, President of the Grenada Football Association, the GFA, Chenny Joseph, has praised the efforts of Grenlec to help in the development of football. He says that such programs will help to get more youngsters involved in the sport. The GFA boss wants to see more youth tournaments among villages, clubs and schools to promote and develop football. He says that such events will give the GFA the opportunity to identify and work with uh, talent at an early age, which he says will help in the development of better players and a higher standard of football. 
the GFA has identified 40 players from the festival to continue training. The Grenada Athletic Association, the GAA, has challenged young sprinter Melanie Rodney to be part of the legacy of a 400 meters uh, of top 400 meters athletes from the Spaisal who have emerged over the last uh, four decades. First Vice President Aaron Moses is hoping that Rodney, who won bronze, a bronze medal at the Youth Olympic Games in Nanjing, China, will become an international 400 meters champion. He wants a youngster to follow in the footsteps of a former Indo world champion Aline Francic, Olympic and Commonwealth uh, champion Kirani James, and Donald Pierre, who set the foundation earlier on. The Grenada Athletic Association is extremely happy that once again our young athletes have done us proud. As Vida have said, the world is watching. And they are watching because of your outstanding performance. We expect that in the good old tradition, specifically, of outstanding 400 meters athletes coming from Grenada over the last four decades, that our dear friend, Melanie will follow in the footsteps of those outstanding 400 meter runners and continue to etch in the minds of the world that this small island somewhere in the Caribbean can produce outstanding 400 meter athletes. Moses also expects other athletes to excel. We also expect that other athletes will continue to do well. We have seen the performance in the heptathlon. We have seen performance in many other areas. We have seen the growth of the numbers of our athletes who are attending colleges, particularly in North America, and their outstanding performances, including that in swimming. And so, I sense that Grenada is on the cusp of a lot of great things from a sporting point of view. And so we want to urge you to continue to be motivated, to continue to be committed, to continue to dedicate your life to ensuring that you achieve your goals and your dreams. And to remember that you can only do that if you remain focused, you remain healthy, and dedicated to ensuring that you listen to your coaches, that you work hard, and most importantly, that you enjoy whatever sport you are participating in. Sports Minister Emmeline Pierre says that the good partnership being developed between the government and sporting associations is bearing fruits. Uh, she says that the recent success internationally in the field of athletic is a clear indication of the collaborative effort between the government, the Grenada Olympic uh, Committee, and the Grenada Athletic Association, among others. Uh, Grenada has performed splendidly in the last two months, winning two medals, a gold and a bronze at the Commonwealth Games in Scotland, and a bronze medal at the Youth Olympic Games in Nanjing, China. Minister Pierre is, was speaking at the return home of the Youth Olympic uh, bronze medalist Lenny Rodney last week, Saturday, at the Boyle Bishop International Airport. I do not believe that we can do well. I do not believe that we will do well if we do not have that kind of partnership. If we do not all find common grounds that we can all work together. And so because of that partnership, I believe Grenada has been doing well. We have been improving, as Pierre said, we are moving up and we continue to look forward to even greater things in the future. These post ministers showed the nation that the government is committed to the growth and development of sports. Uh, she's optimistic that many more successes will be achieved in the coming years. That's sports. I'm Trevor Thwaites.